Welcome to the Glory Reign Devotional. This is a beautiful, glorious day. It is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God has something wonderful, something beautiful, something awesome for you and I today. We are glad to be counted among the living, not just to add one more day, but another opportunity to bring glory to God. We are here for a purpose, and we will fulfill God's agenda today and for the rest of our lives to the glory of God. Thank you once more for being part of this broadcast. Today we want to continue from when we stopped yesterday. You know, we stopped uh, reading from the book of Matthew, chapter number 7. And, you know, we were talking about uh, what Jesus was sharing to the multitude. And, you know, he was talking about the reality of the narrow gate and the broad gate and that those who go through the narrow gate actually go in to eternal life and that which is strive to to be among that crowd but those who go through the broad road the broad gate you know there are very many but the, the unfortunate situation about that is that it leads to destruction and you know Many of the time, people miss the plan and purpose of God simply because they are misguided or they are misled. And today, we don't want you to miss it. Just after Jesus was talking about the reality of that, you know, on a day like this, you know, a number of people want to go to church, want to uh, be part of one religious activity or the other, but not many are careful enough to examine what they are part of. You see, the scripture says we should test all spirit to know whether they are of God. And Jesus was speaking, and you know, after talking about the narrow gate and the broad gate, he went right on to speak, and he was talking about the need for us to be able to recognize, you know, the false, I mean, the true prophet from the false. Now, let's look at that in, you know, verse number 15. Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 15. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, and this is what the Word of God says. Beware of false prophets who come to you dressed as sheep, but inside they are devouring wolves. Now take note. He said we should beware of false prophets. Now a lot of people just uh, would want to be a part of anything religious, um, as long as it has the name of God attached to it. No. Jesus talked about false prophets. In other words, as much as you want to live a good life to the glory of God, you must be careful. You must be careful to be sure you are not susceptible to the tricks and the evil pranks of false prophets. Jesus called them false prophets. And why? You know, that's, this scripture is so amazing. And so how do you really know a true prophet from a false prophet? All right, look at the scripture. It says, beware of false prophets who come to you dressed as sheep, but inside they are devouring wolves. Now, Jesus said they come dressed as sheep. In other words, um, their, their outlook, the, the way they are dressed, they may have a big Bible, bigger than mine, and they may, you know, have a cross, you know, a chain with a cross as the pendant, and then they may, you know, 
uh, make use of the religious language. God bless you. It is well with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That does not make somebody a prophet. In fact, if somebody pray in the name of Jesus, it doesn't make somebody a true prophet. All right? It doesn't make somebody a true servant of God. Scripture says that we need to test all spirit to be sure that they are of God. So, no matter who the person claims he or she is, you have the responsibility to test to be sure that this person is of God. And he, he went on to say in verse number 16, he says, you will truly recognize them by their fruits. Do people pick grapes from thorns or, fig, or figs from thistles? Even so, every healthy sound tree bears good fruits, worthy of admiration, but they sickly decay. What less tree bears bad, worthless fruit. A good, healthy tree cannot bear bad, worthless fruit, nor can a bad, diseased tree bear excellent fruit worthy of admiration. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Therefore, you will fully know them by their fruits. Okay. What is Jesus trying to say here? Now, if somebody claims to be a servant of God, he preaches the word, but behind his life is contrary to what he preaches, then that person is a false prophet. Because if he is a true prophet, if he is a true prophet, he is going to practice what he preaches. There are those who say, you know, follow what I say, not, not what I do. You know, but Paul wrote, say, be ye imitators of me as I am of Christ. If it is of God, it is going to bear the fruit that will bring glory to God. Now, examine carefully. If you discover that there is somebody who claims to be a servant of God, but he lies. Somebody who claims to be a servant of God, that, but he is involved in sexual immorality. Be careful because that is contrary to what the scripture preaches. If he is a servant of God, then he should not be involved in things like that. Because Jesus said, if he, if he is a good fruit, he is going to bear good. I mean, if he is a good tree, he is going to bear good fruit. That you cannot get good fruit from a bad tree. And then by their fruit, you should know them. We're going to continue on this tomorrow. But right now, I just want, to, want you to have your readers up and test all spirit. And the best way to test all spirit is to know what the word of God says. And as you study God's word, we continue on this tomorrow. We're going to look at the difference. And we're trusting by the spirit of God. We will know what it means to walk in the ways of the Lord and to identify who is the servant of God and who is not. Now, if you are not saved, it will be very difficult for you to be able to know who is the servant of God, who is a, a prophet of God. You need to hand over your life to Jesus. You need to ask him to help you. If you've been a victim of false prophecy and false prophet, please take your eyes off that man and put your eyes on Jesus. It is very possible that is because you fix your eyes on the man instead of instead of on the Lord that you were swindled or that you were, you know, manipulated. You need to put your eyes on the Lord. Scripture says, looking unto Jesus, the altar and finisher of faith. If you have not done that, you want to ask him for mercy. If you have not known him, you want to ask him to be your Lord and Savior right now. So why don't we ask him? Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you today, want to ask for your mercy, and want to ask that you take over my life, and that you reign in my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. Please forgive me my sins, watch me in my sins, and make me one of your children. I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. If you pray that prayer, I decree, 
your life will never be the same again. And I decree it is well with you. For everyone watching this broadcast, it is well with your body, it is well with your soul, and it is well with your spirit. Have a lovely week, a glorious week. It will be a blessed one for you. I decree you are blessed and lifted in Jesus' name. Amen. Talking about you, how holy. Yeah.